Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering the top things to do in the stunning city of Dubrovnik. Additionally, I'll also be sharing a tip on how to save money on attractions and transportation throughout the city. Before we begin, if you haven't done so already, make sure to press the subscribe button below. Doing so really helps support my small channel and enables me to continue making this type of content in the future. With that said, this is Backpack Gringo providing you with the best things to do in Dubrovnik, Croatia. Before visiting, especially if you're looking to visit all the main attractions, I'd recommend on picking up the Dubrovnik Pass. This pass essentially grants you free access to a lot of the main attractions, allows you to board public buses for free, and also comes with a lot of discounts to other attractions as well. These passes are sold throughout the city, like at tourist info centers, but the easiest way to get one is to purchase it online. On the main site, the passes are sold in 1, 3, and 7 day durations and will truly help you save a ton of money. Given that the city wall attraction costs 35 euros alone, getting the pass definitely pays for itself many times over. In order to ride the bus, you'll need to get your hands on a bus pass. You can do so by presenting your Dubrovnik pass at any of the bus kiosks located at the main bus stops. After scanning, they'll hand you a bus pass that's valid for the duration of the pass that you purchased online. And one last thing to note is that the timer in which your pass is valid will only start once they scan your QR code at the bus stop kiosk or at the first attraction you visit, meaning you can safely purchase these ahead of time. Now, with that boring part out of the way, let's now jump into the top things to do in Dubrovnik. To start off the list, the first place I'd recommend on visiting is Fort Luvrienets. Often referred to as Dubrovnik's Gibraltar, this fortress is an absolute must to see if you're visiting the city. The fort was constructed in the 11th century to safeguard the city from potential threats. It's strategically located on top of a rocky cliff overlooking the Adriatic Sea, and you have to walk up quite a few stairs to get there. This fort is really cool to walk around in and explore, and at the top you get some unparalleled views of the city's ancient walls and the crystal clear waters below. For those of you who are Game of Thrones fans, this fort was actually featured in the series as the Red Keep in King's Landing. This fort made many appearances throughout the show, especially in Season 2. Now, right outside at the base of the fort lies the Dubrovnik West Harbor. This was possibly one of my favorite views in the entire city, and you get such a perfect vantage point from the top of the fort. And for you Game of Thrones fans, this also may seem familiar from the TV series. This area was the harbor of King's Landing, and was also featured as Blackwater Bay. I definitely recommend making a stop by the harbor, as you can go for a swim, rent kayaks and explore some caves, or grab a bite to eat at the waterfront cafe. After you stop by the fort in the harbor, you can walk a few minutes and make your way through the city walls into the old town. This is where practically all the main attractions are located. Upon making your way through the relentless hordes of people, you'll have arrived at the old town of Dubrovnik. Upon arrival, immediately on your right-hand side, you'll find the large Onofrio's Fountain, or what the locals call Kuchak, meaning Fountain Dog. This fountain was designed in 1438 and constructed to provide a reliable water supply to the city. 
After filling up your bottle with its fresh cold water, you can head across the street to the entrance of my favorite attraction, the City Walls. If you're looking to get a walk-in and enjoy the views of the entire town from above, the City Walls is your go-to place. And luckily for you, assuming you purchased the Dubrovnik Pass we previously talked about, you can avoid paying the steep 35 euro entry fee. The walls itself date back to the 7th century and covers approximately 1.2 miles around the old town. Along the way, you'll stumble across great vantage points, places to stop for a bite to eat, the old defensive towers, and also some killer views of the sea. Once you exit the city wall attraction, right around the corner is the Franciscan Church and Monastery. This 14th century establishment contains one of Europe's oldest pharmacy museums, and also a world-renowned collection of ancient books and manuscripts. They also have a nice inner courtyard as well for you to walk around and enjoy. After exiting the Franciscan Church and Monastery, you can now take a stroll along the town's main street known as Stratton. This 300 meter long street is paved with white limestone and is lined with shops, cafes, and historic buildings. This is one of the most busy streets in the entire town, so you'll have to do your best with weaving in and out of the crowds like I did while filming. The main street Stratton connects the two gateways of the city, at one end is the Onofrios Fountain, and at the other end is the historic Luza Square. In this square, you'll find the Orlando's Column, a pillar symbolizing the city's freedom, the Dubrovnik Bell Tower, both a clock and city bell that have been in use for centuries, and also the Sponza Palace. This palace was built between 1516 and 1522, and is one of the few buildings in the old town to survive the 1667 earthquake. This palace has historically served many roles and has acted as a customs house, a mint, a treasury, an armory, and also a bank. Today, the palace is home of the city's archives and interestingly enough, is the venue for the Dubrovnik Summer Festival. Right across from the palace in the Luza Square, you can find St. Blaise's Church. Dedicated to the city's patron saint, this Baroque-style church was built in 1715. It's known for its marble altars and the statue of St. Blaise, who is holding a scale model of pre-earthquake Dubrovnik. This church is relatively small, but it's free to enter, so you should definitely make a stop by it. After the church, the next place I'd recommend on visiting is Rector's Palace. This palace has since been turned into the Cultural History Museum, but was originally built in the late 15th century for the elected rector who governed Dubrovnik. Exploring this palace was really fun as you get to see the original restored rooms, alongside art, furniture, and a lot of other cool stuff.
Just like everything in the entire town, the main staircase in the palace was also featured in Game of Thrones when Daenerys was talking to the Spice King. One more thing to note is that inside the palace is the memorial of the defenders of Dubrovnik. These rooms are dedicated to those who lost their lives during the siege of Dubrovnik and celebrates Croatia's succession from former Yugoslavia. Inside, you can see many photos of the cities in ruins from all the bombings and the destruction. Dubrovnik's Old Port, also known as Porporella, is a historic harbor that you'll find right through the gates of the walls. This harbor has played a crucial role in maritime trade and activities throughout its long history. Today, it continues to serve as a functional harbor, while also being a popular place for relaxed walks, access to boat trips, and has a lot of dining options along the waterfront. Also, you'll get a good bird's eye view from above when you go on the city walls walk. Another place you can make a stop by is the Ethnographic Museum. This museum features roughly 6,500 objects from the city's region and the nations of the surrounding states. Here, you'll find things like traditional attires, textiles, tools, and all sorts of other artifacts. This is a cool museum that really gives you a window into how people used to live. Unfortunately, after exploring a little bit, I ended up getting yelled at for filming by a very angry lady, so this is all the footage I have. Another popular place to visit in the city is the Jesuit Stairs. These stairs gained fame as one of the most beloved Game of Thrones locations, notably for the Walk of Shame scene. This scene is where Cersei Lannister is walking through the streets, double-cheeked up, and gets some dookie thrown at her in Season 5. At the bottom of the stairs, there's a ton of places to eat, but I'd probably avoid these as you have a constant swarm of people going by, as it's one of the most popular tourist spots to take photos. If you're looking to get away from the swarms of people, a nice thing to do is to relax and have a beach day. While there's plenty of awesome beaches to visit, I'd recommend a stop by Lapad Beach. This is the perfect beach with plenty of chairs and umbrellas for rent. What makes this beach so great is that it's surrounded by a lot of restaurants and also has nearby bathrooms and showers as well. This is actually near the area we stayed, so we got to walk to this beach each day and enjoy the sun. A special thanks to everyone who has made it this far in the video. I hope you find this guide useful and that it helps you plan your next trip to Dubrovnik. Feel free to leave any questions or thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, we would greatly appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Doing so really helps out our new platform, enables us to continue making this kind of content, and allows these types of videos to be shared with fellow travelers. So thanks again for tuning in to another video brought to you by yours truly, Backpack Gringo.